Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Well, we're back this week and our show continues to grow. We're getting emails from the Canary Islands, from England, from the Maldives, yes. And it's going to be another great show this week because our very special guest is the all-around voice, Stephanie Riggio. And she's going to be here talking about all the great stuff she does and about her new studio. She is very creative. And when you hear the process she went through to build this place, I think you're going to be quite amazed. I'm going to have some hits from the NAM show, more video clips from my adventures on the NAM show floor in Anaheim, and some cool things I feel you just can't miss. And I'm also going to talk about why Hackintoshes are not particularly a great idea for mission-critical studio computers. And my tip of the week is going to be about how you monitor your audio. I like using studio monitors. I like using headphones. We can debate <laughs> about that. All right. And we've also got photos of the week, so I'll be sharing the best shots we've gotten so far of home studios. Keep sending them in to ewabshop at gmail.com. Coming up next on East West Audio Body Shop. He's the voiceover studio engineer of the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia tech grad with a knowledge of recording studios unmatched in his field. He's a voice actor from Buffalo, New York with 30 years experience in recording studios and behind the mic. He solves people's home voiceover studio problems in the blink of an eye. Together, there's no studio problem they can't solve, and they'll do it for you tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. Now, live from a basement in Buffalo and an office in L.A., here are Dan Leonard and George Whittem. Hi there, I'm Dan Leonard, definitely in the East. I'm George Whittem, out here in the West. And together we are East, East West, West Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. For real. Absolutely. Good evening, America and the world. <laughs> it's Ewebs calling, and uh, we're here for another week. I thought it was important that we take off of the Super Bowl because we would have been on right in the middle of that fourth quarter, and that was a really great game. Yeah, it was a barn burner at the end there. So. It was a good game, you know. So uh, better off that we're here. Now, mm -hmm. next week should be interesting because I'm going to be in Florida. But we're still going to do this show, and I'm going to do it from Florida. Awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So I can actually wear a Hawaiian shirt and be comfortable as opposed to the, like, 20 degrees it is here in Buffalo right now. Are you going to do it from your room, or are you going to do it from uh, the sand? Uh, probably from my mother-in-law's office. Oh, there you go. Even better. You know, there's a really nice echo in there, so we can get the idea of, this is not what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> anyway. Aren't you so going to have your iPad, Apogee mic by then, do you think? Uh, is it on the market yet? I thought you said you ordered one. No, you I didn't? Haven't, I haven't ordered one yet. Oh, okay, okay. There's, there was a pre-order, but we're, we're still waiting for it. I may just, you know, and I'm waiting for Spark, the, 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 the what is it, the digital Spark to come out? And, yeah. You know, they're all like, they're here. Well, sort of. not quite yet, you know. They're rolling out, yeah. That's these are right. These are pretty relatively small companies. They're not like Apple where they can have 5 million uh, inventory sitting there and then everybody gets one on the same day you know it, it takes time to roll Dole these them out yeah it does <laughs> but uh yeah i can't wait that's gonna be fun to have you down there and do do something with your when you're on location again that's true well maybe I'll, maybe i'll do it in the back here yeah see now i have to do it now i gotta set this all up <laughs> i can do it from the pool because there's this there's there's statues in in uh, on the other side of the pool mm -hmm. and they're like the muses Mark Cashman will like that. <laughs> and and one of them is holding, it, it seems to be a, a a jar of fire, but it actually looks like frozen custard. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird one. <laughs> anyway, right. uh, I, I, no, I, no, I set that up. Now everybody's going to have to come in and see that. That's going to yeah, be really that's, cool. That'll keep them, that's going to double our live show viewership right there, I'm pretty sure. I'll, and I'll give you a personal tour. <laughs> anyway, we have a great show tonight. I mean, as, as usual, we've got a great guest. Stephanie Riggio is going to be joining us tonight from her. Her studio, which is apparently very unique and a lot of thought went into it. And she's mm -hmm. going to tell us all about that and some of the stuff that she's working on right now. Mm -hmm. And you're going to talk about some of the fun stuff you've been going through with uh, your computer. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I uh, I have a Hackintosh. I feel like I should be in a 12-step program. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you will be now. <laughs> but I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. 
I also have a vi uh, another video from Nam to share with you guys. Another 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 product that you might want to consider. Another microphone. This time on the other end of the uh, spectrum. The other end of the like quality spectrum or the pro quality price spectrum. You know, the last time it was the Apogee mic, two hundred bucks. Right. This one's pushing the lot the high fifteen hundred dollar range, but. Uh, but for, for, for an iPad mic or just a really good mic? No, this mic? is a good studio mic. Good studio mic. Really okay. nice studio mic that some some of our fans, I happen to know, are really big fans of, actually. One of our viewers in particular, Paul Stridwerka, he'll mm -hmm. like this. So yes, if yeah, anybody, I, everybody knows Paul, then you know what mic I'm talking you, about. You know, we know what you're talking about. <clears throat> also, I'm going to be doing my, my tip of the week, and this week we're going to be talking about how you monitor your audio. It amazes me how people don't know how to listen to their audio. It's one thing not knowing what to listen for, but it, it also is important to be able to listen properly so you can hear all the things that you're supposed to know that you're supposed to listen for right. or something like that. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your Hackintosh problems? Glad so to. It'll be a tale of warning for all of you. That's right. Well, for those that are wondering Hackintosh, uh, what is a Hackintosh? Well, um, for quite a while now, it's been possible to run the Mac operating system on a standard PC. I mean, the, the big secret is that a Macintosh Mac Pro or a Mac Tower is really just a bunch of PC parts, except, you know, of a high grade and, you know, the, the, everything fits together and works very well and everything's been thoroughly tested by Apple. But really, it really is just a bunch of PC parts. So some enterprising geeky geeks got geeky geeks out there <laughs> decided they would start making uh, their own Macs because, well, a lot of those guys can't afford a Mac. And uh, so you can build something that will perform on par with, say, a, ni a nice Mac Pro, a quad-core CPU Mac Pro. Um, for a, You can build something for about a third the price that will perform uh, uh, just as well. So that's, that's what I uh, have. Um, last summer, I was tired of having uh, using dragging my wife's iMac from the other room because my MacBook Pro was getting really tired. And it just wasn't quite cutting it. I couldn't get the, the frame rate of the show and the quality of the image and all these things. I was just up against my maximum capability with that machine. So, you know, just couldn't get the Mac Pro together. I thought, you know what? Let's just take a chance and give this Hackintosh thing a try. And to be honest... It was rock solid. It really did perform really nicely until about three weeks ago. Immediately following our show from uh, to, uh, the show with uh, Howard Kogan, uh, my machine started doing some weird things, and then all of a sudden it would not, it wouldn't boot up. <laughs> it, it smoke started pouring out the sides. Yeah. Sparks, fireworks. Yeah, no, it wasn't that dramatic, but it just it just would not boot. It would get stuck at that Apple logo, and it wouldn't go any further. And, I started digging into it. And I was like, okay, this is where it's time for me to call in an expert. And everybody, including myself, knows the right time to call in an expert. So I did some scratching around the net. The, the guy that built it for me was, it's at Georgia Tech. He's a student in engineering. So uh, he wasn't going to be able to help me. So I went on Craigslist and I found a guy right here in the area, about 30 minutes from me, took my computer down there. And it was just, if you can imagine the ultimate, like, bachelor pad you know no absolutely no care in the world for cleanliness order anything like just that's the that's the kind of guy you want yes crap family. everywhere a jar a, a thing of cigarette butts like a two inches deep on this patio everything's covered with that uh, cigarette uh, you know grime it just it was just a mess but anyway long story short he rebuilt the machine and uh, it's not been 100%. So tonight is really the first real test run to see if it's going to hold it together for the whole show. But if, I've been having these things called kernel panics. And uh, I think we were able to suss out what was wrong. But the bottom line is, if I had cloned my drive, in other words, after the thing was all built, and I cloned the drive, so made an exact duplicate of the system as it was built when I first got it, right. I could have restored it. And I could have been back in business. Now I, I am backing up, and I, you know, I preach the gospel of backing up all the time. I mean, you guys hear me talk about backup ad nauseum. But right. I didn't have a backup of basically the boot disk, you know, the the thing that boots the machine, and that's where I went wrong. So it took me about a week and a half of coordinating to get it back online, and then I and then I did. But there is no Apple Care 
for a Hackintosh. There ain't, you know, if something goes wrong, you are on your own and you better be resourceful. You either better have a lot of time, a lot of patience, or, you know, if you had a lot of money, you probably wouldn't be doing this. You sure shouldn't, shouldn't be <laughs> because yeah, really. it's not the best option for the day-to-day user and someone that wants a system that's rock solid for production use. I mean, production use means a computer that you use to produce your income. Your computer has to be reliable for that. And for that reason, not something I would recommend for everybody. Right. So, and that, and that's the end of that story. And that's the end of that story. I do still have a Dell mini, uh, what is it called? The mini 10, the little cheap netbook. Right. And that's been running Mac OS for over two years now. Rock really? solid, absolutely wow. flawless. A three hundred dollar MacBook, uh, wow. but again, it's like I was really psyched about it when I first got it, and I thought this is going to be the perfect in uh, VO to go kits, you know, a little portable kits for voiceover. Right. And then I realized the support issues. I can't possibly support a whole bunch of these Hackintosh laptops for other people. <laughs> I can't go there. So yeah, really. Fortunately, well, they I- came out with the Air and the iPad, and that's all history. Right. So the so the the, the lesson here is. Stick with what you know, and, uh, you know, if you try to go cheap, you're going to end up with cheap. I mean, you were trying to do, I mean, obviously you wanted to be able to go, you know, back and forth and be able to do windows and things along those lines and to do it less expensively. Yeah. But, you know, obviously, you know, it's, it, it takes a little bit more to make a Mac than just the, the OS. Parts. Yeah, just the parts. Yeah, I always say cheap, fast, or good. Pick two. Yeah. And I got cheap and I got good. But, but when fast. it comes to getting getting fast service and support, forget it, it wasn't happening. Yeah. So that's um, why I that's why I love my Mac, which I am watching our show on right now. Yeah. This thing just takes a licking and keeps on flicking. I didn't want to, in, you know, copy John Cameron Swayze there. <laughs> How many of you actually remember that? Right. I mean, and if you want to run Windows on the same machine, get a Mac. The Mac is a great Windows computer. It right. runs Windows perfectly. Even natively, it has a thing called Boot Camp. You can install Windows. It has a driver disk. Actually, the, the install disk for Snow Leopard or Lion or whatever has the drivers for, you know, Windows. So when you boot right. up into Windows, you install the driver, it works flawlessly. In fact, I remember a few years ago, there was a reviews of laptops and the number one rated Windows Vista, I think it was at the time, operating system laptop was a MacBook Pro. <laughs> that was the one that was the most, fa- the fastest, performed the best, you know, best battery life, everything. So, yeah. Yeah. There was, there was a forum thread today and yesterday, people saying, which, you know, it was a PC or Mac thing. Yeah. It was all Mac, 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 Mac. And somebody popped on and went, oh, I'm going to be that guy, you know, and yeah. it, but at least he was nice about it. You know, yeah. there wasn't, I don't understand why people get so ticked off about it. It's just that, yeah. Oh, I won't go there. I, I was going to say something about PC people, and then, then I was going to, you know, they would say something about me. But anyway. everybody has an opinion. Yes. <laughs> well, why don't, why don't we move on from that? Yeah. Uh, now you were at NAM a couple of weeks ago, and you got a few videos for us. And I did. Uh, so why don't you why don't you run that right now, and uh, let's see what kind of fun you had. Yeah, well, this is a great product uh, from a Microtech Gefell. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'd like to tell you something about our uh, large condenser microphone, the M930TS. That's, uh, this microphone is specially uh, designed for uh, voice-over such things. Uh, we have a large output transformer inside this microphone, and that makes a little bit more coloration and sound and so on. And this microphone uses a new developed M930 large diaphragm uh, capsule. It's a fixed cardioid capsule and we had a special circuit board on it that supplies a very low noise level of 7 dBA up to 142 so you have a wide, di- di- a wide dynamic range. And here you see an arrangement with our elastic suspension, the EH93P in combination with a POPS shield. This is a special designed uh, pop shield for this microphone, so you can fix it on the on the elastic suspension. You can exchange the filter, and you can wash it or something like this. And 
the special construction is a little bit different to the normal construction with a ring. The ring makes uh, they changes the frequency response and this construction doesn't change the frequency response so you have the uh, right response from the microphone. So there's colors in the mic, almost no coloration whatsoever. No, there's no coloration at the microphone. Yeah. Yes, that's a short overview about this microphone. There you go. <laughs> I right. love I love the German uh, the German guys. You know they really love the they really love the technology of it. I mean you can tell they're just so thrilled with their own product. You know and they really understand it. That guy probably was one of the designers of that mic. You know. Yeah. yeah now Microtech Geffel is a company that's been around for a while. They're actually they were the East German ver uh, division of Neumann, as I recall. And because I know I had a Microtech Geffel handheld mic, great mic, great oh. mic. And, uh, but it was a handheld. So it was great. Like if you had somebody who was really quiet, you could usually put it at a podium or something yeah. and they could back off and people could still hear them. And, you know, it well, was, it was a very nice. The, mic. the but key feature of that mic stuff. is definitely the, uh, the low noise floor, you know, mine, a seven DB, a noise floor is extremely wow. low. That means you can turn that mic up to the volume that you're going to record at. And chances are you will, it will not be audible. There will be no audible noise generated by the mic. It might hear everything else. But the mic is not what you're going to be hearing noise from. So, right. <laughs> I mean, you, you can hardly hear any noise from any good large diaphragm condenser mic that is noticeable. Uh, if you've got it set right, if you've got your level set right and your input set right, it should, it's like, you know, minus 96, something way down there. It's not yeah. even audible. It's so true. it's not a problem. Until in in any like home studio, no one's going to hear. <laughs> that's, in that's in a home sure. studio, you're going to hear a lot of other noises before you hear the mic in right. most cases. So usually my stomach around 1230. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we've got more coming up. We've got Stephanie Riggio coming up in just a couple of minutes. I've got my tip of the week. We've got those pictures. People, we, people want to see pictures of other people's studios because we can't always get the chance to visit each other. So that's maybe right. that's, maybe that's why this has become such a popular feature anyway, but uh, we'll be uh, right back with my tip of the week and more stuff here on East West Audio Body Shop. So stay where you are. probably one of the most crucial skills a voice actor with a home studio needs to learn. And you can't learn it overnight. You know, modern recording software can accommodate many functions, simplifying what used to be really complex steps. But there's more to it than just that. Without proper technique, the technology runs you instead of the other way around. Join us Thursday, February 16th for a webinar aimed at the more advanced voice actor. You'll learn audio editing terminology, editing theory, a review of basics, seamless editing, how to clean up audio and save you time, learn how to use the spectrogram. Plus, you'll learn all sorts of other great tricks and tips. Thursday, February 16th at 9 p.m. Tuition is just $33 and includes a recording. Just go right here or to VoiceOver Extra to register. This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Now back to two characters that didn't have anything else better to do, Dan and George. And we're back here on East West Audio Body Shop. Yeah, what else were you going to do tonight? We always say that because it's really true. Well, the Grammys. Is anybody watching the Grammys right now? Grammys is it, live right now. That's true. But it'll all be on after we're gone. So. You That's know, true. You can you can DVR it. And Actually, it's can... on YouTube. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, they're 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 simulcasting on YouTube, and uh, it's 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 streaming several places. So I'll be able to watch it anytime later, which is great. Yeah. I, who's the who's the who's the announcer for it this year? Oh, that's right. The first year in many years that has an announcer. I think it's Queen Latifah. Ah. Anybody correct me if I'm wrong there. I think it's Queen Lativa. She'd probably I, be pretty good at that. You know, I, I actually was a Naris member for a short period of time, the Norton the uh, North American Recording Arts Society. The ones that vote on the Grammys and so I got to go to the first like the first Grammys 
actually, I got to go to a Grammys live when I first moved to Los Angeles in 2004. So that was a, an amazing way to move into LA. Two days later, I was in the Staples Center in the nosebleed section watching Prince perform live on stage. And I was like, wow, I'm in LA, man. It was like unbelievable culture shock to go from a dumpy Dodge van to being in the Staples Center watching Prince. And you know, it was like, whoa. And I just, I didn't continue my membership because I just, I'm not involved in that world anymore of, of, right. of the music world, but much yeah, respect. And, and that's why you're still alive. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> it's, so sorry to hear about Whitney. Yeah, we are very sorry. And also, we'd like to send out our condolences to our wonderful friend, Diane Merritt, yeah. uh, who uh, who lost her father this week. And uh, now there was a guy who was a, an engineer. He was a television engineer. That's and, right. um, you know, so, and he was in a, in a local station here in Buffalo that everybody knew and everybody watched. And, uh, you know, there was, there was great history there and, uh, you know, and I'm sure he, I'm sure he missed, he was missed when he retired, but it will all be missed, uh, now that he's gone. And, uh, and of course our, our, our condolences to, uh, to Diane. It's always hard when somebody passes away, especially somebody close. What do you say? She knows what, how we feel about her. And, uh, so our condolences to her on that. Let's move on to something else here. Yes, sir. Um, one of my one of the things that I've always talked about is that uh, you've got to be able to hear your recording properly. You know, some of you are probably listening on computer speakers or your old dorm speakers, which is really bad, uh, <laughs> or a, a pair of realistic bookshelf speakers. It's amazing what people will do. You really Pioneer have to bookshelf ha system. Oh yeah, Yuck. oh yeah. You know, actually, I've got I've got a Techniques you know receiver over here that powers yeah. my speakers for my PC, right? Uh, which I never listened to, mm -hmm. but it's important to be able to hear. You've got to be able to know what to hear. Uh, but <laughs> if you know what to hear and you can't hear it because you're not monitoring it properly, that causes a problem. So let's go to my tip of the week. Now, please, you know, I make a little joke here about headphones and we can come back after this and we can discuss that a little bit, but sure. here's my tip of the week. So how do you monitor you? So how do you monitor your audio? This is probably one of the biggest arguments in the business. Should you wear headphones or should you listen on computer speakers, listen on whatever it is the end user is going to be using? This is the way I look at it. You want to be able to hear exactly what it is you recorded. And the best way to do that is with studio monitors. They are what is called close field monitors. And what that means is, is you don't sit far away from them. You sit very close to them, probably within two to three feet. Specialty fixtures. It wouldn't be the photography industry if there wasn't a light for just about any per. Okay, so as you hear, they deliver back exactly what it is I recorded. But they have to be set up properly in your studio and next to your computer. The area you work in, your workstation, they should be about at ear level, and they should both be about 30 degrees of an angle towards your ears, so you're sitting about like that. But also, the room has to be somewhat dampened in order for them to sound true as well, because you want to hear it back in the acoustics in which pretty much you recorded them in, or at least a neutral room where you won't have it bouncing all over the place. A lot of people make the mistake of using studio monitors in a room that's very reflective and then thinking they've got all sorts of room reflection, when in reality it's just where the room they're listening to them in. So why don't I like headphones? I don't know, probably the same reason I don't like squash. It always sounds so good the way people describe it until I taste it. For you squash lovers, I'm really sorry. The problem with headphones is they don't really have the power 
to really give you the true reproduction that you require. Plus, they're playing little games with the acoustics in your head, and I find unless you have a really good, expensive pair of headphones, like George does, it does it's not going to help you that much. The studio monitors work much better. I mean, just listen to this. Using this lens, you can focus the projected beam of light. These spots are coveted by filmmakers and photo experts. See, it's a little bit more uh, thin. So uh, that's my tip of the week. Studio monitors. Doesn't really matter which brand, just not really cheap ones. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, you like that? All right. Yeah, it's yeah. They're they're a little thin. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> I mean, obviously, not an honest representation of what you're going to get from headphones, sure. but uh, but, pretty, but I, mean, I think I made my point. Yeah. But, I mean, if you take a headphone and squash the, the 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 ear cup right up against the mic, it will sound kind of like that headphone. It, it's pretty of. close. I mean, it's like your ear is stuffed up inside this thing. And if you put a mic in there, you know, relatively close. Right. <laughs> now, now, as I said, you've got an expensive pair of headphones there. And uh, now I, I, you know, we've talked about how you really shouldn't record with headphones on and try and listen to the room. Yeah, because that's it's one thing. You drop thing. That's and, a different, yeah. But, but monitoring your sound back. Now I find, you know, now I've got a pair of Sennheiser or whatever those things are. And I use them only if I have to be monitoring something on, on, on source connect or something along those lines, or if I'm trying to listen to something that I don't want everybody else to hear. Um, but for the most part, I find that it doesn't reproduce things quite as solidly as I would like. And that my studio monitors just really deliver every little piece of audio that I, that I have recorded. Yeah. Well, here's my, All right. yeah, okay. Well, you, 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 my turn. <laughs> Go for it. Um, okay. What it comes down to, to me is, is, um, it's all about, um, frame of reference and what you've become accustomed to. And, um, once you become married to something, whether it's headphones or studio monitors, and you know what you're hearing is honest and true, and you become, become comfortable with that, whether it's studio monitors or speakers, at least in the context of voiceover, the voiceover world, I don't think it matters so much which one you, you use. Um, of course, good headphones will reveal more than cheap headphones. Although I have done some blogs on, on some cheap headphones that actually are pretty, pretty amazingly accurate and, and really sound good. But, um, the, the problem I see with relying solely on one or the other is, uh, unless your room is tuned correctly to work with your studio monitors, your monitor, your studio monitors are interacting with the room acoustically. And the two of them, just like a microphone and a room interact, uh, the speakers do as well. And if the room isn't set up correctly and all that, you get some, uh, you know, bass resonance that shouldn't be there and that kind of stuff. Um, the other problem with only using studio monitors is if there's some environmental background sound, like an air conditioning unit or some, something that's just sort of, uh, in the noise floor, you don't really know if it's in the recording or in the playback because it's always kind of around you. Right. And if you put on some sealed headphones, then you can isolate out the rest of the world and hear that noise. But my last, my last point is that if you do everything with headphones on, you're listening to everything through, it's sort of like the whole world under a magnifying glass everywhere you go. And if you do all your editing for everything that you do in headphones all day long, you will drive yourself crazy uh, because you're going to hear the tiniest little flaws in your voice. Uh, things that you may not pick up. Like you said, good studio monitors, you're probably going to hear them too. But I think headphones tend to even magnify those little things like mouth, mouth sounds, things like that. And, you know, if you're doing long form, uh, edit, editing a long form thing like a, a book, can you Which really have all the time? Yeah. Can you really afford to spend? three to four hours per finished hour editing out every tiny little flaw that you can hear in your headphones. Right. Yeah. You see, know, but mostly I find that I can see those things though, using a spectrogram. So even uh, if I don't hear them, I can go and, and right. I find it and it, and I, that way I can scan it optically and go, True. Oh, there's one here, there's one here, one here. And much faster than going, let's listen to this again, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, yeah. I have a counter to anything you say about headphones. Well, I there's also this thing right here. It's called the VRM box by Focusrite. I was wondering when you're going to drag that. I'm out. not so sure <laughs> this is ready for prime time for the, for us. <laughs> 
But what it does is it takes using the simulated uh, studio acoustics will will make your headphones sound like you're sitting in a professional control room or a bedroom or a living room. And you can even dial up speakers that look exactly like the ones Dan has, those KRKs. And uh, you can bring them up and it'll play them back through those speakers and but through your headphones. It's a really weird thing. And uh, at least it changes your perspective a little bit if you're stuck with headphones all the time. It lets you hear in a different way. It makes you realize how headphones focus the sound so much differently into your head than speakers that are far more natural sounding. Right. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be less immediate. But speaker placement being what it is, if they're not placed correctly, your stereo image just goes out of whack, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot that has to go, that has to do with music production and mixing and that stuff we're not really having to deal with. So that's not our, I won't go there, (laughs) not our department. I won't go there, but I think there was a question about uh, monitor recommendations. So Dan, you have the KRK. What I've got the KRK rocket fives, which you saw in, in, you know, in the video that I made there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had these for like five years, 149 bucks, still 149 bucks at, at, uh, at Banjo. A pair or a, each. I have a, I have a pair. They're 149 each. Right, right, right. That's about. So right. you're you're going to spend about three hundred dollars for that, but worth it because it's going to give you much cleaner audio. And a lot of times people will will call me and they're and they'll send me a, a sample of their audio, and I'm like, can't you hear what's going on in there? Yeah. What are you listening on? Well, my laptop speakers. Well, yeah. that might explain a thing or two. Yeah. So if when you get these, suddenly you're like. It's like Dorothy opening the door, you know, to Munchkin Land. There, it's from black and white into color. Black and white really to color, just, it just makes a tremendous difference. Yeah, it's true. I, the BX Five A's by M Audio. If you go to Guitar Center at the right time of day, they might be one hundred fifty dollars a pair, That's and right. they stack up pretty closely to the KRKs. Um, the che- on the cheapest end that I ever recommend are the are the M Audio AV Thirties. Yep. If you really don't have the dough, one hundred bucks a pair for the pair. Um, and they're not very large. They're called AV30 because they only have a three inch woofer. Um, but that seems to be in a near field setup where they're really close. Seem to, to be satisfactory for, for a lot of people's like little home studios. So exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, Stephanie Riggio is sitting by patiently somewhere going, these guys just don't stop talking. <laughs> anyway. We want to hear from her because she's our special guest and we want to make her feel welcome. And we'll be back with her and uh, hear about all about her new wonderful studio right after this. Dorado Recording Services. Randy Thomas chiming in. This is Alex Verdi. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, George has set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish I've got my travel kit, I got my source connect, I've got it all going on thanks to you. Thanks George, you make it easy. This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Two guys I love spending Sunday nights with. <laughs> and, and, and we love spending Sunday night with her. And so does Larry, by the way. Oh, uh, we're back. <laughs> it's Sunday night, and you're here on East West Audio Body Shop. And it is time for us to welcome our very special guest, somebody who's been wanting to get on the show for a while because she has this very unique studio, very unique sort of thing that's going on with her. And she's a great voice actress, somebody wow. we just want to have some uh, here on East West Audio Body Shop. Let's give a good, warm East West Audio Body Shop welcome to Stephanie Riggio. Hi, everybody. Hey. I'm so happy to be here. This is fun. Oh, we're glad to. It's a little dark where you are. You might want to like get a flashlight out i'm trying to <laughs> i i you know the thing i love about my studio is that it definitely has kind of a mood lighting going on which yeah. which i like mm-hmm. but uh 
but right now I'm like, oh god, it, I brought in extra lights, but it, you're just going to have to deal with it. It's for, it works. It works. That's okay. It looks, <laughs> you're sort of like a like a floating head there. It's kind of <laughs> not bad. I am. I am. Who yes. Knew? Well, welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thank uh, you're, you. You're you're a busy lady, aren't you? What do you where do you where are you working on these days? Where you, well, I know you're in radio doing imaging and stuff like that. I yeah, I do some imaging. I have um, a couple of promo affiliate contract types of things. I have an earpiece here, so I'm mm-hmm. not getting feedback. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, and so, you know, I do the little the dailies for them for their for their different shows, getting ready for their news program and stuff. So that's very exciting. Um, I just did a, a pilot for an animated series, so hopefully that's going to turn into something else. Cool. Um, what else? Oh, something really cool that I recently did. I'm California girl. I'm here in Los Angeles, and. I uh, booked a job where I am the voice of the Gone with the Wind. It's an Ameri- It's going to be an American experience. You know that show on PBS. I know, and I'm like the Southern voice of the novel. It's an American experience cool. about about Margaret Mitchell, and uh, and it just cracked me up because the woman who hired me out in Georgia Public Television. She was like, I can't believe you're from California. And it's like, well, <laughs> this is what I do. You know, I have a, a mother from Texas and a boyfriend from Tennessee. And, you know, I, I pay attention. So and so those are some of the fun things that are happening right now. That's so, great. So, yeah. Honda, you're, 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 I mean, you're doing so many different things. I mean, I, I, like, to, I like to brag that I'm, you know, crossing all the genres and I can do, you know, things in a lot of different things. And you're really succeeding in, in that sort of a, a vein. Okay. How did you get started in this? And then how did you like, were you able to feather out? I'm, I'm betting you're, yeah. you're a radio gal. I did some radio. I, I took my, fr- I majored in theater from Northwestern. I came back home to California. I'm from here. And, um, sort of fell into voiceover. Someone said, oh, you should take a class and or you should look into voiceover. And so I, this was back in the day of reel to reel and cassettes. And so I took my first workshop in Los Angeles uh, through Elaine Craig and Dolores Deal, those of you who know those people out here in LA and Susan Blue. And, and but then, yeah, I did do radio, excuse me, for about eight, nine years at both an NPR affiliate here in Los Angeles and then also at a Clear Channel affiliate in the last year. So little news anchoring, news editing, um, and music host. So, yeah, but when I, when I finished radio, I had to kind of relearn how to talk like a normal person. You know, <laughs> Not so. easy to do. A lot of people <laughs> in radio not- can't really have a really tough time making that transition. Yeah, it's hard. And plus, you know, like you, Dan, is um, my voice is just naturally, it, it, it isn't necessarily average, I guess, because it's lower and, and there's just certain ways that I talk and it just kind of is how I talk. So I had to learn how to sound like a normal, like I said, even more normal <laughs> than I might think that I sound. So, so um, it's all, you know, a lot of workshops, a lot of different things. And, and, and then it just kind of builds and builds. And then about four or five years ago, I started getting involved in a home studio and, and learning about, I've always been kind of a techie person and I didn't even know that I was and <laughs> started, you know, learning all this work that you can get online and 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 then also agents all over the place. And it just kind of keeps growing, which is fantastic. That makes me happy. So so and then wh- whoever wants me, I'm just a, you know, I'll try anything. <laughs> just about <laughs> no, that sounds bad. No, no, no. I'm not you know, that sounds great here. I'm right? doing a whole lot of porn voices somewhere, but no, I'm not. So <laughs> Doing but, ADR for porn and porn ADR. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I would do that. That's I know some friends who do that. That'd be that kind of fun. Really? They have a good time. They laugh. I'll yeah. Bet. I'll bet. How do they stop laughing? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I mean, the closest I got to it was some stuff I did for Playboy Radio yeah. on Sirius, and and it was like, um, give us some of that. No, I am not. not oh, come for on. Anything less than double scale. No. Right. It, well, let me just say it was. It was. Uh, it was like Elizabethan Victorian oh, yes. oh, erotica. Oh. So words words like manhood and, and heaving <laughs> breasts and things like that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's as far as it was. <laughs> and they wanted me to do more. And I said, no, you're not paying me enough for that's me to right. have this out there for the rest of my life. <laughs> but yeah. But you got to tell I us enjoyed. about your studio now. Yes. I'm in diamond. Yeah, I'm in seeing it here, but uh, yeah. I know. No, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna lift the laptop off and give you a little tour. But okay, um, cool. 
but it's uh when did, I, let me ask I'm, you this before you do that when did you decide it was time to to take this plunge which you definitely well, took a plunge after i first actually owned my house so i was like okay what am i going to do but i i started to uh more work was coming in and i just I just thought, you know what? I've already decided that I'm serious about voiceover. I've been doing it for so many years, and I like the the idea of being more independent from needing to drive around Los Angeles or be dependent on an an agent because that's just not the way it is anymore. You can have, you can. There are lots of things. Oh no, I froze. There are lots of things you can do <laughs> hey, on back. your own. So, so I um, it was about a. About two and a half years ago, two and a half years ago, where I really started to think about because I was doing, I had a I had a studio in my bedroom, sort of in the corner, and I had acoustic panels that I bought off somebody from Craigslist, and and it sounded okay. I mean, but I also have an African gray parrot Ooh. and a bunch of other animals, <laughs> and he's not a screecher, but he's a talker, <laughs> and I I realized that whenever anybody wanted to do like a phone session or something, right. I was, I was really in trouble. And so I'd kind of bribe him with, you know, his favorite foods and they would last for about 15 minutes. And so I was doing a lot of work in the evenings or overnight, you know, and I just thought this is just, this is killing me. Cause I'm not going to get rid of my bird. I've had him for 15 years, you know, and, yep. and I'm an animal nut. So um, I just started putting these ideas together and started researching about here in Los Angeles. A lot of people trans- transform garages or other things into studios. And I found this idea about a tough shed, transforming a good old wooden tough shed from Home Depot or wherever into a studio. So as George knows, because I remember early on, I think I was speaking with you about, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing this and um, had an area on my property level because I live on a hill and had the leveling and had some poor buggers bring up the entire tough shed, put it together because that's what they do. And it was just a bare, you know, wooden structure, wooden and metal structure. And then I started researching different materials and the double, the double, uh, what is it called? The drywall? Mm-hmm. George, you know, and uh, or both of you know that. Yeah. the drywall with the, the material built in, you mean? Uh, the uh, qu- quiet no, no, it was No, it's actually two level, two layers of drywall of different widths. Of oh, different uh, thicknesses, so, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's um, so there's, but underneath that is the, is the, God, I'm so, I work in voiceover, I can't find words sometimes. <laughs> the, the insulation that's made out of recycled blue jeans. Uh-huh, what's it called? yeah, Ultra oh, Touch. Yeah. Ultra touch. So there's there's the regular outside. There's the the ultra touch. There is the green glue, which absorbs the two levels of the of the right. drywall. Mm-hmm. And so the entire room. And I'll show you this. And then I've also got acoustic paneling. And um, finished it about a year and a half ago or so. I really started using it in the last year and a half, almost two years. Um, maybe even a little less than that. I wrote it off last year. Last year was my big write off the new studio. So that was very exciting. Awesome. Yeah. That's great Protect- news. Yeah. So, so take us around. Let's, let's see. Let me let's take see. you around. Let me take you around and hopefully let me unplug a couple of things here. Hopefully we'll be able to do this properly. Okay. So come with me. All right. So here's my, oh, this is going to try to unplug. Yeah, there you go. Right, oh, light. Tried Let to, there be light. I know. I know. We tried to do this with my Android phone, but it doesn't work very well. Okay. So um, here's where I'm sitting. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, is it frozen? Is it no, nope, it's just freezing. Just go ahead. You Don't know, worry about it. It does it once up. in a while. Wi Fi catches up. Okay. So we've got share. Is any of this showing up? Yep. Just me yep. standing in the way. Okay, looks like an so, interrogation room, essentially. It's, yeah, it really does. And I've got a few different microphones that I'm going to show off in a little bit. Um, I do have windows. I have this really cool material. It's called like a, it's, it's actually, they're called sound plugs. And it's like, see, here's the ceiling. You'll see there's some more uh, paneling up there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's paneling along the walls. And then there's double pane glass for the windows because I really wanted windows. I, um, whisper rooms. I'm also a musician, so you'll see lots of guitars and mandolins and bass and stuff like that. 
you have curtains hanging there or what? I have curtains. Yeah, let me swivel around. So I have a another little kind of a, a movable baffle here behind uh, me that I can sort of change that around. That was the good. chairs. <coughs> Excuse me. Cough button. And yeah. one of these, and there's uh, another microphone. This is my Mojave, which uh, Dusty Wakeman, the Mojave company, uh, this is actually a, a tube mic. Uh-huh. He's going to be at the that thing coming up, George. I think with you. About. Yeah, yeah. That the uh, the uh, voiceover uh, summit. That's right. Exactly. So carpeting on the ground, double layer all over the place. This door that my door is behind those curtains. It's a big, gigantic door, and it's got it's steel, and then it's got it's got another layer of that other type of drywall, which is a sound drywall yeah. type of stuff. Yeah. Now, now the. The, the cool thing about this, Stephanie, is that, you know, as you move around in there, the yeah. acoustics change from where you're talking, which is, you know, it mm-hmm. indicates very clearly how well you've dampened things. Uh, yeah. You know, so, like, if you want to do something, if you want to back off of the mic and maybe, you know, sound like you're shouting down the hall or something like that, it yeah. will, you, can, you can really adjust it. And, you've, and you were smart to, you know, make a, a movable baffle so you can actually yeah. tune the studio. And I think a lot of people need to learn these little tricks to, yeah. you know, actually tune the room yeah. to sound certain yeah. ways in certain situations. It's not a or, uh, padded cell. Yeah. Right. As opposed yeah, to having exactly. wall-to-wall completely absorption where the whole room right. is just dead everywhere. You've got live and dead 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 areas, so you can change the yeah. sound where wherever you are in the room. Yeah, and for a while I had uh, because I call my studio the sunroom because it's it gets a lot of sunlight. Except I have two walls here behind me that have no um, windows at mm-hmm. all, so so that there is a corner that's super quiet, even when my neighbor's dog barks, which is annoying. Um, but the the sound plugs that I have. Because I have a skylight. I mean, I really kind of, I thought, you know, I want a skylight. I spend a lot of time in here, and I'm, I'm not just recording all the time. I'm editing, and we were talking about the editing. <clears throat> I have the same headphones that, that, uh, that you have, George. Oh, the Biodynamic but, DT770s. Yeah. Let me show you. DT770. hmm Oh, I think I got them on, like, Amazon.com for a yeah. steal. Years ago. I can't remember. Hold on a second. Let me show you this. Okay. Um, that's tambourine. <laughs> tambourine. <laughs> hey, Mr. Tambourine. I know. So these are the things. This is really cool. It's a uh, this big piece of foam. Oh yeah. Um, and I cut it. It that's- was specifically from a the person that I bought the some of the other um, supplies from the, the organization. And it's called a you know just a sound plug. And I have one that's cut to cover my. Um, What's that thing called where they spinning the air to let the hot air off the top? A vent. Ventilator. Yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> a vent. They call it the vent. The vent. <laughs> okay. So I have one for the vent. I have one for the skylight. And I can also plug up these windows too if I really need to Dead make it, it super, super quiet. Right. I even have a little air conditioning unit here that's got some of the extra insulation inside of it. And then I have a cover on that. So... But Very still, innovative. when those choppers when those choppers are overhead, though, psh, forget it. Everybody waits. There's still no, except for the Don LaFontaine lab. I've yet to go to a studio where they don't have to wait a minute when choppers are directly overhead. Yeah, there's the very few studios in LA that can pass the chopper test. Um, oh my! Gosh, Joe Cipriano's yeah. has passed the chopper test. Um, has it really? Yeah, oh he actually sent me a recording that he did with a U87 saying, "Can you hear him? Can you hear him?" That's and then, um, and uh, the 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 Donald yeah. Fontaine lab, because it's in the middle of a ginormous building, even oh, if yeah. we hadn't soundproofed the studio at all, you would never hear a helicopter. And there, we just had oh. to deal with the noise from the neighboring rooms and the you know yeah. that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. we we had it easy because of that. <laughs> A volcano yeah. could erupt in the tar pits and you wouldn't know there. No, you know? yeah. It's true, the tar pits right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's some other little gadgetry because we you got y'all were talking about um monitors. Yep. So I have the, you know, the headphones that I absolutely adore because they are super, super comfortable. That velour in there makes all the difference. But I did get a new monitor, um, sort of external monitor as well, just recently. One moment, please. I picked up one of these little thingamadoos. 
And that is a? A Bose SoundLink. Is it like an iPod speaker? No, well, it's beyond that because it's Bose. Right. Oh, it's well, of course. <laughs> yes, it's it's fancy pants, but it's it's also it hooks up either uh, Bluetooth or um, through you know other regular yeah hardwire sources. I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> yes, and um, the thingamadoos. But I love it because I did have a couple of monitors, and again, I haven't um, dropped the super dime on them because I, I do want to get, I would love to get some really great monitors at some point, especially for music. Genelec. Um, yeah, but uh, but for now, you know, I, I work with what I can. And, sure. Um, but I love this new little Bose thing. It's really, it's got a rich, and I have it kind of in a corner, so even more sound is bouncing from behind it. Yeah. 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 So you're a musician too, and you also record yeah. music. Yeah, and exactly. I, you know, people yeah. should go to your website and, you know, listen to some of your tunes and stuff. It's great stuff. Yeah. Yeah. StephanieRegio.com. But I'll, I'll post all that stuff up. I've got a, my, I'm new. The new thing I'm excited about is SoundCloud. Um, dot com. Have you heard mm -hmm. of SoundCloud? Yeah. Of course we've heard of SoundCloud. Yeah. Oh, of course. So that's pretty cool because then I can just post stuff right away and give a direct link to things. So I've been using that actually even more than my website right now. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how, how technology has just totally changed the way things have, we do things like in the last five years, it's, you yeah. know, it, it's like it's quantum oh, it's, leaps every five years. <sighs> Tell me about it. I was just Skyping with my brother who just, he and his wife moved to China and I was just Skyping with him yesterday on my Android. And I'm like, this is so great. This is so great. <laughs> and, oh, I got to ask you, what is your internet connection? Because we've done this, the Skype video chat with other guests many times. We always yeah. have trouble. And tonight it has been, other than occasional <laughs> freezing, it has been <laughs> it has been flawless. What, what's your internet it's, connection? Like? I have a brand new wireless modem hot off the presses. But what's your um, uh, fire? Who, who provides I, your internet connection? Is it cable or, or Time Warner cable? Really, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, you must have super road runner or something. I don't know what I've paid for, but I have. You know, and I, <laughs> I just like I said, I just got this uh, this modem or this wireless router. Excuse me, recently, and <clears throat> and it's been fantastic. It's got like three. It's like a dual you know, routers. So right. Except, dual band. I'm uploading things. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm in a different part of the house. I'm not hardlined into the router. I'm in a building. Oh, outside. your, your studio is totally wireless from the network inside your house. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Your neighbors must like yeah. that too. No, I'm they sure do. you're secure. <laughs> now, are you using a uh, source connect yet? No, you know, I, I have source connect. I'm, I did this with because I mean I have a PC, but I also have a Macintosh, and I've right. done this before. Where I've, I've like panicked and I've bought something, you know, right. and um, I haven't really used the Apple because I got I got really busy, which is great, and so I use my PC in Adobe <clears throat> Audition. Mm -hmm. um, and the Source Connect I got, and then I had to get a new computer, and I tried to upload it on this new computer on this computer. Yeah, that's a toughie. And, and it's not taking, and now just. Day before yesterday, I can't find my little eye lock, oh. so I'm like, I know, so I'm not quite sure where that's going to lead me. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Sounds like a service call, George. Well, eye locks. <laughs> but to find my, eye I can't lock, help yeah. you with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, I, every year I get one or two calls from clients crying the blues because they lost their eye lock, and when you lose the what eye happened? lock, you lose Source Connect. Yep. Oh, you so, can't just replace the eye lock or nope. something. That you sucks. cannot. I better find this little. Bug. Yeah, it's got to be there somewhere. One client will not name has bought three licenses. So. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I got it when right before they doubled the price. I was so proud of myself. Right, right. You know? Oh gosh. I know it's in here. Oh my you'll gosh. You'll find it. Oh, you'll find it now. <laughs> yeah, you, you need a little. You need a little bit more light in there. I think that might help I, a little bit. No, I'm getting. Yeah, I'm getting like a flashlight, hands and knees. Yeah, it's gonna be. I wish it smelled like bacon. I could let my dog try to find it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, Stephanie, it has been absolutely fabulous having you with us, and of course, we want to have you back on again. Especially when you get a little bit more light in there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, you, you, you look great. Oh, and though. I wanted to tell George yeah. that yeah. your little, I also have a road shotgun mic. Um, the NTG got, one, two, or three? I don't know. I think it's a two. Was it $300 or I know. $700? It was not $700. So yeah, so it's probably the two. Does it take a battery? 
I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference between the one I'm and the two. The, the two can a take terrible, a battery. terrible tech guest. Wait, hold on. <laughs> But you like tech, and that's what we care about. Yeah. I like tech, but I do this with music too. Is that I don't know music theory, right? Um, but I but I have a good ear, and I have great people that I work with, and so I just I'll be like, oh, I want it to sound like, you know. And fortunately, I have interpreters with me who can say, oh, she wants a G minor seventh, whatever. Of course. Yeah, right. So I I try to I try to you know get it all right. And see the hands waving. This is why I do voiceover, not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but thanks. No, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna tell that little pod thing that you told me about. George is is great. The little the little tripod thing. Oh, the portable uh, camera tripod that doubles as yeah. a mic stand. Works great. Yep, they're Works pretty cool. Great. Boy, yeah. she's got everything. No wonder you can do everything. You I, have. That's everything. why I love Stephanie. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> Yay! Except I can't remember what takes a battery or where my eye lock is. As so long I, as as long as you it goes on when you turn it on, that's all you. As care long about. as you're working, works, that's all we care works about. Like a that's charm. Right. I've I've done I've done jobs from Smoky Mountain cabins, and my clients didn't know anything. That's so. that's, that's the that's way to do the it. Way it works. Yep. <laughs> well, thanks for being Thank with you. us tonight, thanks Stephanie. So much, you guys. I had fun. I really did. And we're looking forward to seeing you when when I get out to California a couple of Yay! times in the next next couple of months. And uh, and uh, and and of course we'll have you back on again very soon. Anytime, anytime, fellas. So e I very much enjoyed it. Excellent. All right. Take care. Bye, buddy. Take, take care, you. Stephanie. Good night. All righty. Well, boy, I, I've been wanting to see this studio for so long, and I, you know, it's like you've been talking about it, George, and it's like, <laughs> oh, she's got this. She's got this tough shed, and she's done. This I really built it up, didn't I? <laughs> you really did. But it is super cool. I mean, I'm really proud of her for the how much how innovative she was to put that together. So yep. it's really came out great. That's great. All right. Well, we've got. A couple minutes left here, and uh, right after the break, we'll start looking at uh, some of your home studio picks. So stay where you are. We'll be right back. And we're back here on East West Audio Body Shop. And thanks again to Stephanie for uh, dropping by and showing us her wonderful little studio. And uh, speaking of studio stuff, it's time to talk about our good friend Harlan Hogan and Voice Over Essentials. Uh, he's got everything you need there, folks. If he doesn't have it, you don't need it. That's right. It's, uh, I, he's got you know all the stuff that you could ever possibly want. He's picked out the best stuff, the easiest stuff, cost-effective stuff, and he makes it easy for you to have it. Put up their page there, and George. I've picked, out, I've picked out one specific product that's a nice tie-in oh, for, for what we were talking about today, a studio monitor. Oh, studio monitor pads. Yeah, these are the Mo pads. Um, let me just bring the window up larger so you guys can see more information at once. There we go. Um, the studio monitor pads, the whole idea is with these things is they isolate this the studio monitor speaker from the surface they're sitting on or decouple or uncouple them. And the reason that is uh, helpful is um, unless you have an incredibly expensive high-end studio monitor speaker that is standing on spikes and weighs 150 pounds, any smaller lightweight speaker is going to vibrate. The whole cabinet of uh, the speaker is going to vibrate, which will then vibrate the table it's sitting on. Oh, and yes. it turns I've the whole to yeah, it turns the whole table, the your whole desk into a big vibrating speaker, which really messes up the accuracy of the speaker. So that these happened things, to me once, George. I'll oh, tell did you, it? I, you know, oh, it, yeah, and I was like, all of a sudden, my hair. Uh, uh, 
what on earth, what is going on with my system? And then I suddenly realized there was a metal dish next to my desk <laughs> because the speakers were like that. It was rattling. I'm like, oh, if I turn the monitor down, oh, okay, it's not really there. But these things, uh, the, the mopads would have definitely helped that. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're there for. And uh, they're reasonably reasonably priced. Um, and they're adjustable in that they have several pieces of material that you can uh, layer to, to dial in the angle of the speakers. So as you can see in this shot with studio monitors, in this case, a pair of Genelex, oh, drool. Those are about $1,200 each, those two speakers. Um, you can actually dial in the angle that the speakers are going to sit, uh, you know, from flat to da di uh, angle downward to angle back a little bit, depending on whether it's sitting up high or sitting down low. So you can get perfect alignment of the tweeter with your ears and all that stuff. So um, very cool. Not just a gimmick. Um, these things really do help. And uh, so I thought that tied in nicely with our studio monitor subject. Excellent. So just go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Does he, he doesn't have the monitors too, does he? I no, he I, I, he has some studio monitors. I don't think he has the Genelex. Uh, those are a little bit, uh, a little spendy for most of us, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he only carries things that are reasonably priced in, in most cases, things that the average voice actor would consider really wanting to use, you know, nothing right. totally. Even the out. really good voice actor might want to use these. Yeah. Things not, not stuff not that's not just the average voice actor. Yeah. Not stuff that's totally like, you know pie in the sky insanely expensive stuff uh here we go this actually i think someone in the chat room mentioned that they use these studio monitors the alesis m1 active mm -hmm. mk2s uh what 275 a pair that's a very reasonable price and there's a great there's, price there's, there's some nice sounding monitors so he does sell some good studio monitors and the 520 series which are the little bit smaller versions of these i think are even less expensive and more compact so um good stuff so thank you Excellent. harlan Harlan Hogan, voiceoveressentials.com. Harlan's also there. He is. We love Harlan. Well, I'm looking kind of purple there. That's kind <laughs> of a dreamy kind of a, a background there. Anyway, it's time for pictures of people's studios. And uh, everybody wants to see everybody else's studio. I mean, I want to see other people's studios. I mean, I get to see them when I work with people on Skype and stuff and people right. are like doing what Stephanie was doing, you know, carrying their laptop around. Going, All right, here's the microphone. Here's this over here. <laughs> Who do we have this week? Well, we've got a great, this is just a one shot photo, but it's just priceless. It pretty much says it all. This one is from Judy Greenberg. And Judy, uh, look, look at Clarita. Look what she's come up with here. Let me, uh. Zoom out and get the whole thing in the shot here. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> this is just, this is the quintessential, you know, home studio. I mean, just take what, take what you got and make it work. And I bet I haven't, I, I have to get a sample from Judy. Um, but I bet that this booth that she's cobbled together here sounds pretty darn good. I've actually heard her booth, and it actually does sound very good. Um, and, yeah. and, and and it is endorsed by the American Chiropractic, Asso Chiropractic Practic Association. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, so we've got a bed mattress overhead, so that obviously takes care of any bounce from the ceiling. It also will obviously, well, I don't know if it's obvious to everybody, but to me, I think it would be a fantastic uh, base trap. Um, that bed mattress will soak up you know, a huge wide range of frequencies. So she's not going to have any bass problems. Um, the only thing problem she might have is if that thing falls on her. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's just a mattress. You know. <laughs> well, you know, it's her and her computer and her microphone and everything else that's underneath it. I, I think she has it fairly well secured. There. Yeah. She yeah. Be doing it. it looks like it's, it's pretty safe. Yeah. So, yeah. She has uh, it pretty well secured, but it, it's very clever. And it's not flashy. It doesn't have any cool lights. It just has, uh, this, this is when I go to a home, a home for the first time and someone asks me, you know, what do I have to do to get some <laughs> usable voiceover tracks, you know, and, uh, you know, come up with a good answer for me before you leave to make your, you know, I paid you to be here. What are you going to come up with? This is the kind of stuff that <laughs> this, I've this been looks known. pretty good. Yeah. This is the kind of thing I've been known to do. Uh, you know, I haven't gone as far as the mattress over the head. But, you know, just taking things that are around the home, covering them with the blankets and towels and sheets, and just getting a space that's absorbing enough or absorbent enough to to get some relatively clean sound uh, you know, in the room. You know what I found works really, really well in a real pinch? Yeah. Inflatable mattresses. Oh, really? 
if they have like a velour side to them. Uh, uh-huh. Now, when I'm down at my mother-in-law's and father-in-law's next week, when we're down in Florida, of course, there's a lot of inflatable you know, beds there. We're, you know, we got kids. <laughs> uh, and that's what I do. I go into one of the, you know, the large walk-in closets there and I set up this little cabin made out of, out of inflatable mattresses and it actually works really, really well. Really? The mattress doesn't sort of ring and kind of it, echo. Nope. It's not like a basketball. Yes. It's, it's, it's much softer, much lighter. True. And it does an excellent because it's a big air insulator. Yeah. It's a big, big, uh, gap of air in there and it's just, it just works very, very well in a pinch. Yeah. So. In a pinch. I, I guess the idea being that it's uh, since it's such a flabby material, it's not is yeah, like I said, it's not like a basketball. So it has right. some pliance to it right. and it's not gonna resonate in a ring very much. Right. And you can like make a little teepee out of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it does work. That is awesome. Well, I you know, I I everybody I love I love the most clever kludge together studios. The the more kludgy the better. I love it. Kludge. I love it. I mean kludgy, is that the is that a word? I kludge. To kludge is to put together a mishmash of things to make something work. But I'll remember that for words with friends. Oh no, I haven't gotten sucked into that game yet. Me, me neither, but my wife's, my wife's phone buzzes at two in the morning from somebody out in California. It's probably my mother playing. Oh, I got a great word for her now. <laughs> What's going on over there? <laughs> but anyway. Keep sending in your pictures, folks. I, I will continue sharing them as they come in. And, uh, um, any, anything goes, you know, it doesn't matter. As you can see, Judy's was very simple home r- grassroots studio to, you know, the dream studio and everywhere in between. We love to share your shots. So please keep sending them in. And the address to send them in is eWebShop at gmail.com. That's right. And we do still actually have a phone number, 818-973-E or 818 Oh no. And see how long it's been since I've said the phone number. I can't remember it. 818 92EWABS. 92EWABS. That's 927. Oh, geez. Okay. That's, that'll do it for tonight, everybody. <laughs> hey, good night, everyone. <laughs> oh, God. No, we still have our voicemail box, and uh, you can leave messages in there, and we will uh, listen to them, and we will play them on the show. So if you want to be heard and you want to have your question uh, played on the show and answered live on the show, we're, we're happy to do that. We do yep. still take questions. So if something Absolutely. pops up, we're happy to take it. Yeah, man. I got a busy week ahead of me. I mean, just just nuts. Yeah. Uh, Two books, the webinar Thursday night, which you can all sign up for, go over to voiceover extra, mm-hmm. uh, on, on advanced editing techniques and stuff. That's going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Board meeting. I got to go to and get ready to go to Florida. Nice. You know, oh, and good. my son's being inducted into the national honor society. That's going to be two hours of sitting around going. Congratulations. But, but we're very proud of him. Yeah. That's, that's he, fantastic. He, he, he really earned it. That's great. Well, what else is going on this week? Well, I think uh, I think Wednesday is the last. Uh, what do they call it? The early bird special day for Voice, Voice Twenty Twelve. Don't miss it. Whatever deadlines are happening, uh, that's a and, biggie. Yeah, and we're going to be there, and uh, we are. we're going to be doing. We 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 have a we ha- you have to go over to the Voice Twenty Twelve uh, website and check out the the promo we've got running there for our session there. Plus, we're going to be doing eWebs from there as well, and we're going to be doing eWebs from Fafcon. Yep. In just in about a month from now. That's going to be fun. I, I'm really excited about doing all the on-location live studio audience thing. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> a lot of work, I, but a lot of fun too. I told you it was going to be fun. You're like, oh, I've never done this. I told you it was going to be a riot. You're just sucking it up. I can <laughs> tell. I'm buzzing. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I could change your life. Hopefully I get to finally finish Malcolm McDowell's studio. <laughs> right. And I, then we can have him on the show. That's and, right. Uh, I'm going to blackmail him, get him on the show somehow. <laughs> <laughs> You've got his computer. Exactly. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not finishing your studio until you promise to be on our show. <laughs> that is a pretty busy guy. Just getting, just getting him locked down to agree to a date and time for me to deliver all the stuff, which is sitting in my house. That's been really difficult. So yep. when you get really busy and you're making like a lot of money, time to get a personal assistant. Just a yep. tip. 
we're working on it. <laughs> anyway, well, next week, we're not sure who our special guest is going to be, but like I said, I'll be in Florida, and I'm sure whoever it will be will be a very special, special guest. Uh, and uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay. And I've got a couple of people who said, yeah, I'll be on your show too. But just got to nail them down. See, this is what happens when you don't have staff. I know. You've I got, know. We, we don't have any, we, who are the producers? George and I put this together. It's, you know, aside from running our businesses and all that other stuff, Being we want to make sure that you guys have what, we, what you get every Sunday night here, most every Sunday night. And uh, we want to bring you the best people who can tell you the best stuff to make your home studio as good as it can possibly be. And, uh, and we're glad to do that for you. So, uh, I guess we'll be back next week and I'll be under the palm trees. You My lucky toe can thaw God. out. Well, you're in California. Oh, What's phooey. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last time you you're heard You're by that? the ocean. <laughs> I know. You're a block from the ocean. That's my excuse. I, every, day, every day is a staycation when the sun is out, so That's can't true. complain. All righty. Well, on that note. Let's pull the plug on this, baby. All righty. Everybody have yourself a great week. Practice, 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 and... We'll you'll, see get, you next you'll get the Carnegie Hall, the Carnegie Hall eventually. All righty. We'll see you next week. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Enjoy the Grammys. All righty. <laughs>